Hey everyone, this is Jove with Jove's Gaming Lounge. And today I'm going to show you how to install DuckStation, the PlayStation 1 emulator, on your Linux. I'm going to be using here Kubuntu 2204, and it's going to look familiar to some Steam Deck users because it is the same desktop environment. So here we are on the desktop, and I'm here on the GitHub for DuckStation. DuckStation can be found in your FlatHub or Flatpak repositories. However, uh, one thing that I've noticed here on the GitHub is that the only supported version of DuckStation for Linux are the app image releases. We're going to be using the app image today to install DuckStation. What we'll do is we'll go here to the latest builds for Windows and Linux. We're going to go down past the change logs and we're going to find DuckStation x64 app image. We'll click it to download it, save it to our downloads. Now, there are a few ways we could go about this. Originally, you could just right click this, go into properties, go into permissions, and check is executable. Running it like this, you'll be able to just open up the app image and use it as is. However, App Image Launcher is a program that lets you integrate the application into your desktop. Basically what it does, it'll take it, it'll store it in the application folder, and it'll create the desktop icon for you to place wherever you like. You can also get that on GitHub. I'll leave the link to this in the description below. If you're on any Ubuntu based systems, you want to get this package right here, the AMD 64.dev. With App Image Launcher in our system already installed, all you have to do is double click the App Image. The app image launcher shows up here and it's going to ask you to integrate and run it. We'll integrate and run. And here's DuckStation. So now that we have DuckStation up and running, what we're going to need to do before we play any games, is we're going to need to place the BIOS or the PlayStation inside DuckStation. Now, I can't tell you exactly where to get your BIOS files. Google search PS1 BIOS files. You should be able to find them pretty quickly and pretty easily. We're gonna go into settings. We're gonna go to general. And from here, we have all the options here on the left hand side. We'll click on BIOS. And this is the location of where your BIOS files should be placed. All right, so in the Dolphin File Manager, you'll need to click the little hamburger menu and show hidden files or click Control H. What we're gonna look for here is dot local share duckstation BIOS. We have dot local share dog station files. We'll paste our BIOS files in here. When you get your BIOS files, make sure they are named SCPH 5500, 5501, and 5502. These are the three regions the uh, North American region, Cal region, and the Japanese region BIOS. Now that we have that, Next thing is we need to add our game directory. So we can go to our game list here and we'll add a directory. This will be anywhere you have your game stored. When you select your location, it's gonna ask you for a recursive scan. I say yes, because this is gonna update the game list whenever you pull a game out or add a game to your ROMs folder. Before we do anything else, let's just get a game up and running and test it. So here we have Jet Moto up and running. Now, if you just wanna play games, all you have to do, plug in your controller. We'll go into our settings. Now, once you have your controller plugged in, you can go to automatic mapping. Here I have my PS4 controller plugged in. So I'm just gonna click the PS4 controller and it automatically maps the controller to the PlayStation's configuration. And we can just go ahead and close it. As you can see, I can just press start now. Before we get into playing the game, I actually want to show you a few different things that you can do to enhance the gameplay options. We'll go into settings. We'll go into a display. And right now we have OpenGL rendering. We have Vulkan and OpenGL. I'm going to go for Vulcan on this. Then I'm going to pick the GTX 770. 
And then for aspect ratio, I want to keep it at 4.3. A lot of games render under the 4.3 aspect ratio. You could add integer scaling. Uh, I like to disable linear upscaling because it actually removes some of the blur. I'll toggle it on and toggle it off just to see. Words look a lot sharper. We can show the internal FPS. We'll be on the top side. We can go into enhancements. And here, I like to turn these on. All four of these don't really do too much harm. And pre, uh, PGXP, the geometry correction on the characters. Another thing we can do here is I like to turn the internal resolution up. It can be up to 3X or 5X, depending on your hardware. Some hardware can't even get this up past 1X. So just be mindful of that. I know my hardware can do it, so I'm going 5X. And for texture filtering, which will be how these pixels are rendered, we can change that and I can go XBR. We're going to smooth out the, the pixels here. There you go. Pixels are much smoother. And if you want to add a scan line for your games, you can enable that in post processing. Add CRT. You make a, a lots CRT. Or you could use the dolphin effect scan line. Close this and jump into a game. Let's say, for instance, you actually wanted to stretch your borders here and wanted to play in wider screen. Well, fortunately, some games can run in widescreen and look good. What we can do is head over to our enhancements tab. We can enable the widescreen hack right here. Just that simple. And then we'll change our display of a 4.3. We can go 16 by 9. Close this and then we'll full screen. And here we have Jet Moto running 16 by 9. Now, like I said, this is game dependent. Not all games will look good and not all games will work uh, with this. Some games will actually not render the edges of the screen that were originally cut off on the 4 3 aspect ratio. So it's trial and error. All right, and there you have it. This is how we installed DuckStation on Linux. We're using the app image, which is the known, fully supported by the developer version. You could go ahead and install the flat pack. Just know that that one is not fully supported by the developer. I, I usually like to get things directly from the source. So this is it right here. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you found this helpful, refer to a friend, give the video a like, Make sure you subscribe for more. This is the first in a series of Linux tutorials that I'm going to show you. So be sure you stick around and subscribe for that. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.